All right, so I'm gonna pull off the steering wheel so you guys can get a good look at the handbrake. Quick thing though, the reason why you wanna wait to use your handbrake is early on when you're getting started drifting, you can really use this as a crutch. You're gonna miss all these like great skills that are gonna make you progress and get to a much higher level. So I always recommend if you're starting drifting, watch this video, you're gonna learn some stuff, but wait to use that handbrake. Get to where you can actually connect the entire course and drift comfortably without the handbrake and then start putting it in to get those bigger entries and using it as a tool to move your car around the track. But don't rely on this on day one. That's a really big newbie mistake and you will regret it. So the handbrake is a tool again, right? So we have our pedals, gas brake and clutch. We have our shifters so we can switch the gears, steering wheels so we can move the car, right? Handbrake locks up the rear wheels. Now this is a hydraulic handbrake. We'll talk about the differences in a second, but they all pretty much do the same thing. So you may have a pull up and it's just the parking brake. That's totally fine. Those work great as well. They all do the same thing. The handbrake locks the rear wheels together, um, which allows you to slide the rear end out. It also allows you to adjust where you're at on the track, slow yourself down. Um, but it's, it's basically your brakes, all four wheels, handbrakes, just the rear wheels. So there's basically three different versions of handbrakes. There's like the stock handbrake or the parking brake. By the way, foot brake, just don't even use that. Like the foot handbrake, if you have one of those, that's that doesn't work because they lock up. There's really no way to make them work. So we're really talking about handbrakes, right? So stock handbrake is just the rear parking brakes. Generally, uh, they're pads inside the rotor. As you pull up, it squeezes, the squeezes those pads to the inside of the rotor and locks the rear wheels. And that's a great, honestly, stock handbrakes work really well. The next one though is upgrade to a hydraulic handbrake. You can either have pull up, pull back, you can even have push ones and mounted different ways. Generally they're all doing the same thing. Now the reason why you would go to hydraulic is for a couple of reasons. First reason is you can do an inline handbrake where you basically put it into the rear brake system and it only locks up the rear brakes. But hydraulic is just, it's just that much tighter. It'll lock that much harder. It's just better, right? Stock handbrake, then inline. Then the next upgrade would be a hydraulic handbrake with dual calipers. So now you're actually putting a pair of second calipers on the rear end and they're separate brake systems. So what that does is now you've separated the brake systems in case of a failure. It's also sometimes when you have it in line and it's with the brakes, there'll be a little bit of a lag or it'll be tough to pull when you're trying to use the brakes as well. So that's pretty much the next upgrade. Um, but again, all three systems work great and they do the same thing. It's just as you progress, you know, you upgrade this piece like any anything else. All right, so let's dig in. So what I would say is when you're starting to use a handbrake, practice with your car off. You can even do this in your garage, right? There are some specific motions that you need to learn. So very basic, what's happening is you're clutching in, then you're pulling the handbrake while you're clutched in, and then when you're off the handbrake, you're clutching back out. Now what happens if you pull the handbrake with the clutch out, a lot of different things happen. You can break your rear end, break drive shaft, break your axles, all different stuff because the drivetrain is still connected. So you wanna disconnect the drivetrain so you can pull the handbrake. So the motion that we wanna practice with the car off is that clutch in, pulling the handbrake, letting off, clutch out. We all mess this up, guys. So I really say like focus on learning this so you can mess it up uh, as few times as possible, but it will happen, especially when you start doing it faster. Really just sit and kind of imagine yourself going on the track, clutching in, pulling that handbrake, clutching out. Quick pro tip, the reason we modulate, sometimes it requires like a double pump to get it to fully lock on a hydraulic. It just depends how you have it set up. The neat thing about that is if you have it set up that way, just kind of one pull will just slow them down and then two pulls will lock them. The other reason we modulate is so we don't flat spot our tires. So if we are doing like a real long handbrake, as we're in that turn, we're kind of slowly going back and forth. So they're just kind of like turning like that and we don't get a huge flat spot on your tires, which is, is never good. Mm -hmm. 
So practice, get that motion down, you know, do it slow, and then do it like, you know, real fast. It looks like you're almost going at the same time, but you're not. Like as you're coming and you're, it's releasing, you can pull on and then right as you can let go. So just practice that motion, guys. Get that down. That'll really save you uh, some breaks. The cool thing is you can kind of go as fast as you want and use the handbrake to slow yourself way down. Uh, we did another video on faint entries, which is I think the coolest way to enter, the fastest way to enter, and that's kind of more really using the vehicle speed and inertia to enter. But the handbrake is also cool because you can just kind of drag it out. You can get really cool long slides on the edge of the track. Another cool use for the handbrake is let's say you're into a corner. to extend it a little bit. So the corner that we've been hitting a lot for this video is actually perfect for it. You have to do it often on this corner. So we're going in and we just need to get a little bit further on that, across that straight. If we use a throttle, we're gonna get in too close to the apex. So all we're gonna do is drag that handbrake a little bit. And that actually, in corner wise, it kind of puts you in a straight trajectory. So you're gonna slide basically straight sideways, which is gonna pull you away from the corner. Great handbrake use is just a speed check, whether you're following someone in tandem um, or just need to slow it down a little bit. It works similar to the brakes, but it's just another kind of way to do it. And basically brakes are gonna pull you one way, whereas handbrake's gonna pull you the other. So a lot of times a handbrake is, is a great way to kind of speed check. Alrighty guys, so that is how to use your handbrake in a nutshell. Remember, if you're just getting started, wait to use it. Please like figure out how to get around the track, get drifting really good, and then put that handbrake in as a tool, right? But it is an amazing tool, <clears throat> definitely necessary for drifting. Leave us some comments below, give us some feedback. Let me know what else you guys wanna see. We have a whole how-to drift series, but I know there's stuff we're missing. Uh, so let us know, and we always respond to all of our viewers, so if you guys need help with car setup or anything like that, uh, we're use this as a resource. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys in a couple days.